regardless of what walk of life you come from, if you want to be right, God will get you right. And uh, I think of the different rappers that are here. Somebody, uh, my son, I talked to him before I came down. He said, Dad, I was watching a telecast last night. You wouldn't believe who came up for prayer in line. He said, P. Diddy's son was here last night. I said, I wouldn't know. He said, Dad, yeah, he was there. He said, I zoomed the camera, and then I pulled his picture up and matched. He said, I can't believe it. Well, everybody ought to be here. <laughs> Whatever name you had, P. Diddy, Sight Squatch, <laughs> SpongeBob, Shorty Red, and <laughs> Little Fever, Big Fever, 50 Cents, Half Nickel, Half Pipe, <laughs> uh, whatever you call yourself. Everybody has to do the same thing to get right with God. Everybody. We explore the life of Christian Casey Combs, also known as Ken Combs, the son of hip hop mogul Sean Diddy Combs. I'm gonna give it to you raw. Parents make sure that you don't get f straight up. There's a lot of f going on in the entertainment industry, the music industry. Everybody's getting caught up in something. I'm, I'm, I'm cured now, though, everybody. I'm cured. Everything's good, you know, y'all can have me over for dinner, everything is good. From lavish lifestyles to legal troubles, join us as we delve into their journey and the controversies surrounding it. Born into hip-hop royalty, King Combs has not only inherited his father's fame, but also his penchant for entertainment. As a rapper, dancer, and model, Christian has carved out his own niche in the industry. However, the private life of King Combs has seen its share of controversies. Is there like a, a pressure that comes with coming from and being part of such mm -hmm. a legacy? Well, it's not pressure. It's just really like me wanting to make my legacy impactful right. in many different areas other than just music. Like, you know, I have big shoes to fill to impact the culture mm -hmm. and change the culture in a big way. So, you know, I feel that, but for me, like it's something I really just want to do and I'm really right. just having fun doing it. And it doesn't really feel pressure because I feel blessed to be in a position. And you've been it. around it your whole life. Yeah. So you, you could have just sat back next to it. You could have, mm -hmm. you could have ate off of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think that this is one of the most challenging things that someone so close to, could do yeah you know what i'm saying because it's it's looked at a different way it could be scrutinized it could be more pressures and yeah. more things that people expect from you then there's always the comparison so to to have that so-called apple not fall fall too far from the tree and be talented you know what i'm well, saying yeah it, it, it it's one of those things where i love that you're doing it and i've seen the work yes, that sir. you've put in you know what yeah. i'm saying yeah. like because we you got to think bro like I don't know how long, you know, it's been a lifetime yeah. of you being next to it, but even us just talking about your music and your career, that mm -hmm. alone has been years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of tuition into the school of experience for that, sure. that we've seen and that you've been living for your entire life, bro. Like, you ready for this? Yeah, and my pops always, you know, put that in me, like, you know, you gotta work hard. Being the child of a celebrity isn't easy. The pressure can be immense, and often, their actions are judged onto a much harsher light than others. King Kam said, It's tough, but it's also a part of the life I was born into. You learn to take the good with the bad. King Combs was implicated in a lawsuit stemming from an incident that occurred on a luxury yacht during a private party he hosted. The party, attended by a mix of celebrities, influencers, and personal friends, was meant to be a secluded celebration. The lawsuit was initiated by an attendee who accused King Combs of negligence and creating an unsafe environment that allegedly led to her personal injury. Specific allegations included the failure to ensure safety measures on the yacht. Christian King Combs appearing unbothered less than a week after being sued for sexual assault. Diddy's 26-year-old son sharing this video montage on Instagram, having fun at a bowling alley. Carefree clip comes just days after a yacht steward filed a lawsuit against Christian, alleging he sexually assaulted her in December 2022. The victim in the case has produced audio recordings that allegedly shows forcing himself upon her and that he wouldn't take no for an answer. 
The woman says it all happened during what was supposed to be a wholesome family excursion with Christian and his father. Check this out, y'all. This is Diddy. This is my son, King Combs. Yeah, I've been watching my pop since I was a kid. And I'm proud of you, boy. She says Diddy was the one chartering the yacht for the trip. This lawsuit is bad for Diddy. He may be able to get out of it, but the optics are terrible when he's already facing a criminal investigation. And allowing excessive alcohol consumption without adequate supervision. There were also claims of a physical altercation, which were cited as part of the reckless behavior encouraged by the party's atmosphere. As the case advanced to court, both parties presented their arguments. The plaintiff's lawyer argued that King Combs and his event organizers did not take necessary precautions to prevent incidents typical of such high-energy gatherings. They sought damages for medical expenses, emotional distress, and other related costs. King Combs' defense team countered these claims by emphasizing the consensual participation of all guests in the party activities. They argued that the sufficient warnings were given and that safety protocol standards for such events were in place, suggesting that any incidents were the results of individual actions rather than negligence on their client's part. The media extensively covered the lawsuit often framing it as a reflection of celebrity culture's excesses. Public opinion was divided. Some sympathized with King Combs, viewing the lawsuit as an opportunistic attack on his reputation. Others saw it as a justified call for accountability, particularly focusing on how celebrities manage their public and private events. Another lawsuit was the Jones lawsuit. The documents indicate that Rodney Jones is the plaintiff in a civil action field against several defendants, including including Sean Combs, Justin Dior Combs, and various corporate entities. The cover page of the legal document indicates that the case includes highly sensitive and graphic allegations. One, this is perhaps the biggest claim, is that Diddy and his son murdered someone in plain daylight and got away with it. But there's apparently a man that they know, that everyone who works with Diddy knows, that they can call and they essentially will get everything cleaned up and they are implicating the LAPD in this madness because they produced fake reports. And he's got some real good evidence to back up these claims. He says that one evening uh, during a camp that they were running with several musicians, Mr. Combs and Jay Combs were in a heated conversation with somebody named G. And while this conversation was moved out of the studio and into a restroom that was adjacent to where Jones was sitting, he heard approximately two feet away from him again, Mr. Jones is the producer that's suing him, gunshots suddenly ringing out. He recalls hearing multiple gunshots. Mr. Jones immediately went into a state of shock and fear that he would be shot next. He genuinely believed that he would be shot through the door due to how close he was. After the shooting ended, a crowd gathered around the restroom. When the door finally opened, Mr. Combs and his son exited. G was lying on the restroom floor in a fetal position, holding his stomach and bleeding out of his leg and his hip area. Everyone stood around and looked up at him. Frustrated by the lack of aid that was being provided, Mr. Jones, the producer that's suing again, dropped everything, ran to the guy, and immediately began placing pressure. As he was applying pressure on his stomach, he realized that G was gushing blood from another area. He decided to lift G up and place him to sit on the toilet, and he asked the crowd to call the ambulance. Now, here is what is interesting. The ambulance does arrive, uh, and Mr. Combs, according to Mr. Jones, Diddy gave, gives strict instructions to inform the police that he had nothing to do with the shooting. He also forced the producer to lie to the police by telling them that G was shot while standing outside of the studio. And the police, just believed this despite the overwhelming evidence that the shooting did not take place outside of the studio and that it instead took place inside near the bathroom. He includes in his lawsuit this photo of the bathroom of, and we are blurring it here, of the blood in that bathroom. And then it is stunning because he also shows how the media then reported it, right? A fake police report was produced and then fake headlines were the result. This is CBS News, man shot outside party at Hollywood Recording Studio. Of a sexual and violent nature, along with other serious accusations, that specific nature of Justin Dior Combs or King Combs' alleged involvement is not detailed in the pages provided. 
The document outlines that the jurisdiction is the Southern District of New York, suggesting that the alleged actions took place in New York or had a significant connection to the state. Furthermore, the suit is filed under the auspices of federal court, implying that the allegations might cross state lines or involve federal law. Typically in the legal process, following such a complaint, the defendant will be served with the lawsuit and will have the opportunity to respond to the allegations. The response could include a complete denial, an admission of certain facts while denying the allegations, or other affirmative defenses. Here, the lawsuit filed by Jones has a trigger warning, saying this document contains highly graphic information of a sexual nature, including sexual assault. Additionally, there are graphic images of the aftermath of a shooting, redacted images of sexual intercourse, redacted images of minors, sex workers, and prostitutes, details of sex trafficking, and the illegal distribution of guns and drugs. The defendants of this lawsuit are Sean Combs and Justin Dior Combs which is the son of Diddy, amongst other entities as well. The jurisdiction and venue says, from September 2022 to the date of this filing, defendants have consistently and purposefully availed themselves of the privilege of conducting activities within New York, thus invoking the benefits and protections of New York law. In return for these benefits and protections, defendants must submit to the burdens of litigation in New York. Each lawsuit and legal encounter has been dissected by the public and the press, creating a narrative and often overshadows his career achievements. Former music producer for Sean Diddy Combs worked on his latest album with him, suing him for sex trafficking and sexual assault and harassment. Well, they filed new court documents and included in those documents was an unsworn declaration from Jones himself detailing more things he saw, heard, experienced during his time working and basically living with Combs. And in this 18-page declaration, it starts with a promise that he's telling the truth. Quote, I have personal knowledge of the facts set forth herein, which I know to be true and correct, and if called upon to testify as a witness, I could and would completely testify there too. Now, he's declaring all of this under threat of perjury, so if he's lying, that's a big deal. Now, if you ask me, I think one of the reasons Jones is doing this is to bolster his credibility because it's come under attack in the public. As we mentioned, some of the people that he mentioned in his lawsuit have fired back against those allegations. Opposing counsel questioned his narratives and motives. The lawsuit describes the December 2022 scene aboard a yacht in St. Martin. The woman worked as a steward on that yacht and says Christian Combs may have spiked her drink, groped her, and forced her to have oral sex. Her lawsuit includes photos of bruises she says are evidence of the assault. An attorney for Sean and Christian Combs called the woman's claims lewd and meritless, and he attacked her attorney, Tyrone Blackburn. This complaint is filled with the same kind of manufactured lies and irrelevant facts we've come to expect from Blackburn. This is exactly why the federal judge in New York slapped him two days ago for a pattern of behavior in improperly filing cases in federal court to garner media attention, embarrass defendants with salacious allegations, and pressure defendants to settle quickly, and why he was referred to the disciplinary committee in the Southern District of New York. Thank you for joining us as we explore the multifaceted lies of Christian Casey Combs. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications.